When looking at this gameplay footage, you might think that because of its high quality image, this must be played on an emulator, right? Well, you would be wrong. This is actually being played on real NES hardware. Specifically, it is being played on this RGB modded AV Famicom. And that is what I'm going to be taking a look at today. So, let's get right into it. What is going on, everybody? This is Dylan of DSL Media, and today I am going to be taking a look at a product that, well, I had actually purchased a few years ago. And that right there is the AV Famicom. But not just the AV Famicom, oh, ho, ho, no. This is an RGB modded AV Famicom. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what's so special about this? What's so special about a console that is RGB modded? Like, what's the difference between an RGB modded AV Famicom and a regular NES? And, well, why even buy the AV Famicom? Well, I will show you a few things that are uh, different about this. Well, I would like to pull out this, the NES right here. Now, this is an unmodded NES right here. And of course, with an unmodded NES, then of course it runs like NTSC games. And I'll talk about the international stuff in a moment. But this right here, it would run NT, it would run standard NES games, but also the video that would come out of here would be composite. If you were to have owned an NES fresh out of the box during the 80s, it most likely came with an RF modulator. And while this might have been good for its time, the video quality does not really hold up very well. Composite video cables did exist, and while they were good for its time, that has its own setbacks. All of the video signals are compressed onto one video jack, and that leads to some rather messy colors, and the picture suffers as a result. Composite was the standard in the United States, and so when it comes to international countries, consoles like the Super Nintendo and consoles like the Genesis has native RGB video, and those consoles uses this cable, this type of cable. This, ladies and gentlemen, is SCART. And unlike composite video, SCART actually has all the different color signals separated, which allows for a full RGB video signal. And so, in the case of the AV Famicom that I have right here, um, this is, uh, admit, now this was actually modded, like I said before, this was modded because even though this has the Super Nintendo, uh, the Super Nintendo port uh, that, you, that you see right here, it's still composite video is the highest that an unmodded AV Famicom uses. But this is a modded one, and this actually has RGB video modded into it. So I could actually plug, so if I plug in, uh, if I can plug this in, so if I actually plug this into an upscaler, such as the Framemeister or such as the OSSC or even the uh, RetroTINK 4K, then it'll, then it'll actually output crystal clear video quality. Now, granted, there's also the matter of color palettes. If you if you look at uh, if you if you look at the color palette used in this color mod, it's actually based off of the FC EUX emulator uh, color palette because, and part of the reason why that is, is because the NES doesn't even really have a quote unquote true color palette. Whatever color palette that the system really has is kind of based on like how certain TVs would uh, would output the video. Uh, there's been color palettes that tries to recreate the more dirty colors, and probably the color palette that I like the most out of the NES would probably be the NES Classic color palette, which is the one that was used for, uh, well, the NES Classic Edition. 
and that's been used in the Switch Online. And if there is one thing that I do wish this this uh, modded AV Famicom does have uh, is the ability to switch from RGB signals, such as going from the FCEUX colors to the NES classic colors, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. The video quality to composite video is, well, <laughs> doesn't really hold up that well. It especially doesn't really hold up that well when it comes to uh, high definition TVs, especially if you're playing on a 4K monitor, composite video just does, looks not very good. I mean, some people like it and that's fine. That's totally fine. It's your preferences, but <laughs> If you're looking to get like decent video quality out of the NES, <clears throat> well then, composite video is just not the way to go. So now going into why I specifically went with the AV Famicom and, and um, for the RGB mod is because yes, I could have gone with a, with a modded version of this NES, um, but the thing is, there are a lot of the mods that exist for our, for modding RGB into classic Nintendo systems like the NES tends to be a bit spiffy. Like there are some mods, there are some RGB mods that might keep in, that might keep in the composite signals here, but might have like some weird, uh, cut through on this part of it where like, where like this, the Super Nintendo port might stick out in some weird sort of way. This is true with like other Famicom consoles, those kind of have the same thing. And so with this, I already know that this has a Super Nintendo port. So whatever mod that exists of it, that would output from this, it wouldn't even have to, it, that wouldn't even have to be removed. And so of course the, uh, and so of course the AV Famicom reads, uh, well, of course it reads, uh, it, it would read Famicom cartridges like this cartridge that I have here of the original mother. Uh, that would be Earth, that would be Earthbound Zero, Earthbound Beginnings. It's the first uh, mother game, first game in the mother franchise. Uh, which never got released in the United States, and it would become, and it and it would become, uh, it, it would not be released in the States, and its sequel, Earthbound, would end up being released in the States. But this, and so this would run the Famicom games, and not only that, and not only that, but of course it would run any game for the NES. Now, granted, you do need to have an adapter in order to run NES games on this, but it works. It works really well. Now, as far as controllers go, you can plug in just about any controller. I mean, in this port, I actually have the 8-BitDo retro receiver, which I use for controllers like this. Uh, some of you who may have watched my previous streams may have seen me play on this controller. That's the 8-BitDo NES style controller. And I use it because it's wireless and it kind of looks like an NES controller and it kind of feels like an NES controller. And uh, I played like, I play like NES games on it. I've played Game Boy games on it because this is, because it has a standard Game Boy uh, button layout. So I use it for that. Um, but also of course you can use a standard NES controller like right here where you can plug that in. Uh, I think this is port one. Yeah, where you can plug that in, turn it on, and uh, they, and there we go. Also, another cool thing about this uh, mod, uh, and this was actually just like kind of like a little addition that that goes with it, is when you turn it on, uh, this has an LED uh, light on it, which is not in an, which is not built inside an actual AV Famicom. Not only that, but also that LED light is RGB and it actually changes colors. So it kind of, in a way, at least to me, kind of signifies that <laughs> this is no ordinary NES right here. This is an RGB modded NES that can output that can output uh, different types of colors that can, or not output different types of colors, but can output full RGB video 
it's crystal clear, it looks great on an HD TV, and it's and if you look at the video footage that I have in the uh, capture, then yeah, you can see comparing this to the composite video that it looks really good from there. This is this is the RGB video uh, compared to the composite, and it looks absolutely fantastic. So I got the okay. So I do have this. And you might be wondering, and you might even be thinking, outside of the NES or Super Nintendo uh, video out port that I, that I use here, you might also be thinking, well, what's another reason to get, what's another incentive to use an AV Famicom for, mo for, modi for modding in, um, for having an RGB video mod? I mean, what is the other incentive outside of being able to play NES games and outside of being able to play uh, Famicom games. <laughs> well, it isn't just to play all of those games. It is also uh, to be able to play games from this thing. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Famicom Disk System. Yes, that's right, folks. The Famicom Disk System. Released only in Japan, this system runs off of its own set of proprietary floppy disks, or disk cards as they would call it, as it became cheaper to manufacture than actual cartridges. This includes the version of Super Mario Bros. 2 that was only released in Japan and never got a North American release until, well, technically much later. Um, but in its original form on the Famicom, this was the only version that was released. It was only in Japan. And then also, the, and also you can even play Doki Doki Panic on here, which maybe I will stream that one someday. But there's also the caveat that these discs were rewritable, meaning that you can just copy and write your own games. There were even kiosks that were installed all over the electronic and toy stores all over Japan. That would allow you to write and copy games onto these blank disc cards for a price of 500 yen, or $3 in American currency. Because the discs were rewritable, this allowed people to copy and distribute games, leading to very easy piracy. It even led to some of the first ever Nintendo ROM hacks, such as Tonkachi Mario, for instance. Once the production price of cartridges went down, the disk system became obsolete, and it never came to the States, with the most likely reason being that Nintendo of America was trying to avoid video gaming as part of their marketing, due to consumers being turned off by gaming after the video game crash of 1983. And the Famicom disk system is essentially a floppy disk drive, and an additional accessory which would make it a very hard sell in the States. The Famicom Disk System takes a uh, size C batteries on uh, this compartment, which you could use and without having the need to plug in an extra AC adapter, but I don't even, but I've never done that. I don't know how much battery the Famicom Disk System uses, but I'll just, but I can just plug in, plug in an adapter, and um, from there I could turn on the system, and um, and from and I can just put a Famicom Disk System game in here, and it will read. And once I have the Famicom Disk System, uh, once I have the AV Famicom actually plugged in through this then that's where, then that would be where, uh, that would be where it'll display the video. But really this is mainly for, but this is mainly as a tech showcase, although I am going to have gameplay footage coming out from this and gameplay footage coming out from this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just plugged the retro receiver back in. That has been a showcase of the AV Famicom, the RGB modded AV Famicom, where it'll be able to output composite, uh, not composite video, where it'll be able to output full RGB video and it looks absolutely fantastic. So now to transition over to the end card 
and to ask, what did you think of it? Would you be willing to own an AV Famicom, an RGB modded AV Famicom? And do you think this is a great product and something you'd like to see? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe to DSL Media for more content. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Have a good one.